173 and welcome to the text tools demo. Um, this is just a quick overview of the tools and settings in Dreamweaver that apply to text. Um, just enough to create a basic hello world page, get it online. Um, it's just plain vanilla text and we're going to take a look at making it more interesting later. But um, if you know some CSS techniques right now and black text on white background is too boring for you, it uh, doesn't bother me if you want to play with this page, or you can feel free to also play with it later when we do learn the CSS techniques. Um, one thing I want to make sure to impress upon you is that you cannot complete this lesson or any lesson in Arts 173 without sec successfully comprehending what came before it. Um, that's what I was talking about at the intro where I said this is a class that builds on each module. Okay, so um, let's start by creating our index page. I'm going to click File. Well. I've got it on the My Homework site. I just um, wanted to mention that. And I just wanted to repeat this because it bears repeating. Don't work on your homework with your demo site active. And don't work on your demo tutorials with your homework site active. So make sure you keep that in mind. Um, let's start a new file. I'm just going to click File New. And we're going to just use an HTML blank file, nothing special. Doc type, we want to make sure it's HTML5. This is on HTML5 by default in Creative Cloud, and, or at least every version of Creative Cloud that I've used so far. And it is not on HTML5 on any version of Creative Suite 6 or below. So if you're using an older version, you want to make sure to change that. Um, click Create. And I want to always open with this sequence of things. If I don't always remember it, um, I'll probably leave a comment on the YouTube page and mention it in the video. I'm going to start with a file, save as, and I'm going to name the file, whatever's appropriate for that file, and I'm going to put it in the folder that it belongs in. This is our Hello World page. This needs to be the first page that users see as soon as they click on your site. So that means that we want to call it, that has a special file name, and it's called index. you got to make sure you write it just like that, all lowercase, index.html. And this gets saved into your root folder, your site root folder. So anywhere you have one of these files, this is like the first page of your website. This is the very first thing you want users to see when they get to your website. Okay, so <clears throat> pay attention to your file names and your folder names. So I'm going to click Save, and that's going to create, as you can see, a new file in my root folder called index.html. And the root folder is just the top folder right here. This is the root folder. And this is just showing you uh, which folders are in, you know, and which folders and files are in other folders by using this indentation here. So everything, as you can see, is inside the root folder. We'll have more of that going on later. OK, so the second part of the sequence that I will always open it with, or at least I intend to, is the title of the documents. And that is right here. It says title, untitled document, slash title. We don't want that to be called untitled document. Um, what we want is for this to be basically anything but untitled document. Even better would be choosing something that makes sense. So um, you can type this in a couple of different places. You can type this right where I'm, right, right where my cursor is right now, if I want to. Um, I could say, I can give that title right there. And the other place you can type that in is under the Properties panel. Right here where it says Title. As long as your cursor is in that actual title section. Okay, so I always want to open with those two things. I always want to title my page and I always want to create um, the file and put it in the folder where it belongs, right out of the gates. You also want to make sure that your doc type is HTML5. 
which is going to be the case by default with um, current versions of Dreamweaver. If you've got anything CS6 or lower, it will be something other than HTML5, and you want to double check your preferences. Probably that's the easiest way to do it, um, and make sure that they're always creating HTML5s. <coughs> But you can always change it here or when you're creating the file. It should just the first line of the code should say doc type HTML. Um, not a super big deal. Don't like don't put too much thought into that. Just let Dreamweaver take care of it. Set the preference and just let Dreamweaver take care of it. <clears throat> okay, so now we're looking at a new blank file. Now what we do is gonna feel a bit like a word processor at first, but of course Dreamweaver is not a word processor. Okay, let's actually start adding a little bit of text here. And if you haven't already changed to split view, um, that would be a good thing to do now. And what this is going to show you is the code view as well as the design view, which is, this is the design view up here. It's blank right now because this code isn't going to actually create anything on the page quite yet. Um, and I have my live view turned on, which I, no, I don't. Okay, never mind. Split view. There we go. That's what I meant to say. I have my live view turned on. I wanted to change it to design so that I can either look at split the code or the design view. So, and this used to be left and right. I'm just going to roll with it. Now it's top and bottom, the way they organize these windows. So I'm going to be getting used to this version a little bit as we go. Okay, so. Just to get started, I'm just going to type in a few things about my page. I'm going to put the words Hello World on the top. Now, this is not a substitute for my document title. So keep that in mind, even though this is the perceived title of the page. Um, you have to also tell the computer what the title is. And a lot of times they'll be identical, that first headline. And I'll just write a few things about myself and art. I also enjoy music. The end. And I'm just going to throw in some text just to throw it in here. I don't care if you type this exactly. Hello World is a programmer clause, meaning this is my first attempt at this stuff. Um, when I recreate this page for the index redesign project, this page will go away and my Arts173 portfolio index will take its place. I'll just leave a momentary pause here so you can pause the video and finish typing that. Alrighty. Now, um, what I did was uh, every time I pressed enter, I got this double return here. That gives you a paragraph break. That's typically double spaced from the last line. You can also use shift return if you want a line break. Browsers will interpret spaces as only one space between words, no matter how many you type. So if you want to leave more of a gap, um, than one space, you'll need to insert non-breaking spaces. And that can go in either from the text bar, if that's even still here in this version, or under the insert menu under special characters, non-breaking spaces. Oh, okay, so it's just called character now. There we go, non-breaking space. So yeah, this is looking a little bit different, so if I fumble a couple of things, I hope you'll forgive me. I know what I'm looking for, and I can always um, type the code too, so we might be doing a little of that. Now, what I want to do is I want to designate this top bit of text as the most important text on the page. And to do that, I can highlight those words, that's hello world, and down here under Format. This is my Properties tab, by the way. Um, I can click on that Format and change it to Heading 1. 
Heading 1 is how I tag that text as the most important text on the page. Now, in order to do that, I have to make sure I've got it highlighted. You want to pay attention to your selections. So when you're using this properties panel, it's going to change. It's going to um, change according to what you have selected. So keep that in mind. So it's been visually changed as well, the text to reflect that it's the most important text on the page. It's been made to um, be the biggest, boldest text that's there. Um, and that's great, but it's also important to tag it for the computer. And we're going to um, talk about that as the uh, semester goes on. That's about semantically correct markup. That's about accessibility and making your web, web page as accessible to as wide an audience as you can. Um, okay, so still using the property inspector, you can create ordered lists or unordered lists to specify blocks of text. So, for example, if I want to type a grocery list, um, we can get some wine and some cheese. I'm just using um, you know returns or enters between these each of these lines. So it's it's a little awkward with that double space. Um, we need some crackers. And but it's around Christmas time when I'm making this video, by the way. So I'm kind of thinking like Christmas stuff, you know, wine, cheese, crackers. We need beef log. We need beef log, and uh, maybe eggnog. I don't know. So if you're watching this in the summer, you're probably thinking, oh. But anyway, um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna highlight all that text we just made. Oh, I take that back. No, I don't take it back. Okay, I'm gonna highlight all that text I just made and. I can make that into an unordered list or an ordered list. And the, the only basic difference is that one has numbers and the other one has bullets. So an ordered list has numbers, bulleted li uh, unordered list has bullets. And I did goof that up. I meant to not select the first one. So I just um, clicked undo a couple of times with Command-Z or Control-Z if you're on the PC. So I could go back a couple of steps, and I'll just turn the actual items into the ordered list, which is what I meant to do. And this is just a title. Okay, and when you press enter once at the end of eggnog, it gives you a number six. So you have to actually press enter again on a blank line here to actually come down and get out of that ordered list object. If you press enter once, you're still in that ordered list object, you're adding to the ordered list, and this is something that you really need to learn and understand. The hierarchy of the document is such that each uh, object or element on your page is the parent and or the child of another object. So if I'm adding children to this list, um, that would be appropriate for more list items. That would not be appropriate, for example, for more text. If I had more to say in paragraph form, that shouldn't be item number six on this bulleted list. It should be down here on a new line. So <clears throat> what I'm actually going to add is another list. And this can be something, um, we'll call it Christmas wish list. There we go wish list. And we won't uh, prioritize this, so <laughs> so there will be no numbers. Um, let's see. Uh, I want, gosh, I haven't even thought about this yet. <laughs> um, I want to be the all-knowing, all-powerful master of the universe. And um, I want a new Mario game, and um, time machine. Although, presumably, item number one implies item number three. But at any rate, um, let's make another list. I'll just do the exact same thing here. I'll just select the items in the list, and I'm going to uh, select down here in the properties. I'm going to select unordered list. So, And again, like I said, the only thing that I actually did 
that was different was select unordered list. The only thing that's different about an unordered list versus an ordered list is that ordered is numbered, unordered list is bulleted. That's it. And let's just take a look down here for just a moment. You can kind of see some of this code that's developing. I've got these P things and I've got these OL things and these LI things. Well, these are called tags. And what this is doing is this is tagging the text according to the type of information that it is. And this is a very important concept. Um, you don't have to worry about actually writing this stuff out in code view. I just kind of want you to watch it happen for now and give you the idea that certain things, and it looks like this version of Dreamweaver is a little cleaner with the code too. A lot, I, had a, I had a lot of issue with the older versions because they really just made a huge, they didn't tab your, your code in right and it just, it looked so awful. It was hard to, it was hard to figure out, especially for students who were just learning this, it was really hard to figure out uh, what was going on and you're not expected to write in code in this class. So um, that was a, that was quite a, <clears throat> a disappointment for a long time. So if they fixed that, that would be really, really nice. Um, but we'll see as the semester goes on, we're going to, we're going to really turn this thing inside out, so it'll be fun. Um, as you develop your page, you're going to want to preview this. And you can use Live View to preview your page in Dreamweaver. And it's probably a lot more um, accurate these days. Um, my The traditional thinking is that the um, what you want to do is you want to actually look at it in a real browser and to just give yourself the actual user experience. So let's just kind of get in the habit of that. Up here there's a little planet icon and there's a couple of browsers listed here. Firefox, Safari, and Chrome. And I talked a little bit in a previous video about how to configure this if you want to um, change this up. But right now let's just pick one and for the moment I'll say it doesn't matter. Um, we'll talk about, you're going to learn about why Explorer is universally hated by web designers if you don't already know. And if it asks you to save, I just kind of zapped through that. If it asks you to save, just click save, obviously. <clears throat> we are looking at our local preview here. And this is a, a very useful tool for web developers just to kind of get the user experience. Um, this is uh, one of a few pitfalls, a few big pitfalls, like the pitfalls with a capital P for um, young fledgling web designers who are total noobs. There's this misunderstanding about what what's going on and where a file is basically is what it boils down to. Right now my file is on my hard drive. It's local. It tells me that up here I've got this file colon slash slash slash. That's all you need to know. If you see that up here, it's on your hard drive. It's not on the internet. That's important because I can't really come to your house and open your laptop up and look through it and grade your hard drive. That would be weird and creepy and illegal. So really you're going to have to upload it to the internet to and actually make this page live which has not happened yet that's the important point that I'm trying to get across when you're looking at this this isn't live this is on my local hard drive and this problem for young students always comes in many flavors um, there's you know if you save it and you've changed something you also have to upload it again. It's like you, you save it once to your local and then in a sense you save it again to your remote. Um, and if you upload something that was um, you know, a previous version and you're, you've changed something, you start wondering, well, what's going on then? Um, why isn't this changing? Maybe you didn't upload it. The other thing that can happen is um, the uh, browsers will cache files and you will have to empty your cache and refresh the page sometimes. Um, so keep that in mind. But the big deal uh, is definitely understanding when you're looking at a local file and when you're looking at a file that's actually on the internet because I can only grade what's on the internet. Okay, so while we're on the subject, um, 
let's go ahead and upload this and you can upload your whole site if you want to especially at first this is probably going to be the easiest way this is going to upload whatever I have selected you know what's ever highlighted and if your root folder is what's highlighted you can just press the upload button and it will upload everything are you sure you wish to put the entire site okay sounds good Okay, now the thing that I, uh, the other habit that I want you to get into ties into what I was just talking about. Let's go online and check our page. Now, when you check for your online page, you will have a class index, which will look maybe something like this. Maybe by then I will have re redesigned it, but all this stuff will be here. Um, and again, you've got all of your examples on the left side and all of your fellow students on the right side. And that's... Um, as simple as that. Your name will be on here somewhere, you'll click on it, and it will open your page. Um, I'm using a demo page outside of my current class, so I actually just typed it in manually, but this is actually on the internet now. I can tell right here because there's no file colon slash slash slash, but instead it starts with um, an internet address. When you, when you see an internet address, you know because it's always got that dot com or the dot org or dot net or .gov or .edu after it, those kinds of things, those indicate websites. File colon slash slash slash, not something you see as often, that indicates that you're looking at a file in your browser. It's also going to indicate something else a little later when we uh, start linking files. We'll get to that later. So <clears throat> I'm looking at this online now. Everything has happened the way it's supposed to. Um, my Hello World page is doing what it's supposed to. I don't have to type anything special. I can just click on my name, which we're going to imagine is there, and I go straight to my Hello World page. That's the only correct way for this to happen. Now take a look at the lecture notes at this point. They will give you a few examples of ways that this can hiccup with visual examples so that you can have an idea of what you're looking at is wrong and why it's wrong um, and how to fix it. So. Make sure you take a look at that, and this should get you up and running with a live page uh, with some text on it that says, Hello World. Yeehaw.